If you want everything Lexus knows how to put into a production car, this is your Huckleberry. But are you a dumbass for buying one? Let's drive the 2013 Lexus LS 600 HL hybrid and check the tech. Now, before we get inside, three things that make an LS hybrid a hybrid, aside from being a hybrid. First of all, they're all long wheelbase. Five inches more, that's all about the back seat. Second of all, they all have the bigger V8, not a smaller engine by being a hybrid. And third, they're all all-wheel drive. Now, I'll categorize the interior under two buckets, wood and won't. The wood is everywhere. This bamboo wood, sure, it's an optional color scheme, but man, there's a lot of it. Especially down here, this big chunky piece on the wheel. Looks like somebody was drunk when they were driving, hopped the curb, and drove through a flooring store. Now, let's get to won't. I won't be using most of these drive controls. This car is amazingly busy in that area. Let's go through them. First of all, at your shifter, you've got drive, of course, then sport. Within sport, shiftable gate for up and down. No paddles, by the way, which is interesting. Now, down here, you've got your drive controller, which gets you a push for normal mode of suspension, transmission, and engine. One turn left gets you to comfort mode, which moderates down the throttle response and softens the suspension. Another turn counterclockwise takes you to eco mode, which really dials things back and also turns down the accessories to use less fuel. Now, let's go clockwise. Our first stop is the land of sport. That's going to sharpen throttle response, transmission behavior and the suspension, but another one takes you to Sport Plus. And on top of that, you've got an EV mode button, but the car will also go into EV mode on its own, so by pressing this, you make it do more of it more often. That's an awful lot to choose from. How about just three simple modes? Go normal, go fast, or use less gas. Now, right adjacent to our drive controls is the Lexus Remote Touch Controller, which I'm becoming less a fan of every time I drive it. You really have to think about your hand motions, where you are, and where you're going to land, and that's just too much of a diversion from what I should be doing. On top of that, the Lexus interface is a little bit ragged. It lacks the sort of structure that uh, Audi has with four corners or BMW has with a left menu. Here, it's kind of different on every screen, the way things are organized, and it just gets a little bit chaotic. Now, once you do get into your radio and media setups, you got everything you could want here. HD radio with tagging, AM, FM, satellite radio. Uh, your apps suite through Entune will bring you some music, but also you've got lots of media choices. You've got SD card, USB, streaming Bluetooth, iPod connection, standard aux jack. It's all here, and luckily there's no dumb hard drive to rip to, so they've made smart choices. Unfortunately, meta tag information for Bluetooth streaming just isn't happening, and that dates the system rather seriously. This one has 19 speakers around the cabin, including two over the rear passenger's heads, 450 watts, and it's 7.1 surround. The screen, as you can see, is huge. I believe it's a 12.1 inch display. Nothing is in small type. It doesn't need to be. Now, under apps here is where you're going to find your Enform suite of apps Bing, iHeartRadio, MovieTickets.com, Pandora, Open Table. So you've got a mix of media, information services, and things that are contextualized to driving. Now, of course, you do have voice command on this guy, and the recognition's excellent, but it still requires you to enter an address one little chunk at a time. That's pretty old school. Say only the city name. San Francisco. San Francisco. We have what they call the executive class back seat. For example, here's our Shiatsu massage controller with more settings and choices than even the most hoity-toity spa in your neighborhood. Now, the seat over here on the right where I'm sitting does some amazing stuff. So I push that. My seat's reclining now. That seat's getting out of my way. The downside about the ottoman is unless you're pretty damn short, you can't use it. If I put the ottoman up, it starts to push your legs up, your feet get trapped underneath the front seat, and your legs get broken somewhere about six inches north of your ankles. On the other hand, if you're two foot one like the bear, you'll find it palatially spacious. We've got a big old motor in here, even bigger than the V8 in the conventional LS. It's a five liter. This is clearly a car not using hybridity for efficiency, but mostly for performance. 438 horsepower, 385 foot-pounds of torque. The only transmission here is a CVT. Interesting choice. CVTs don't normally handle massive torque all that well. Zero to 60 for this 5,150-pound sedan is a remarkable 5.6 seconds. Well, the MPG is 1923 for an average of 20. Not exactly a fuel sipper, is it? This car is only four tenths of a second faster than a gas L all-wheel drive. 
Now, a big part of the virtual wash on those numbers is because this guy weighs 460 pounds more than a standard LS long wheelbase with all wheel drive. Uh, this is a lot of extra weight because of the hybrid gear and really its battery. This is what they do that no one else does. I really think this is one of the great, comfortable, luxurious driving cars of all time. That said, this model is just not working for me. There's no particular efficiency here. The hybrid numbers are not great on that front. It's got plenty of power, but it's crippled by the fact that initial tip in on the accelerator and initial decel when you back off are both numb and kind of buttery. Doesn't work. Even in Sport Plus, there is no sharp heel and toe on this car. So why have those modes? The other thing you notice about Sport Plus is it never really conquers body roll. Hmm, it should do that. It doesn't. Another reason for it not to exist. Now, we do not have, but there is this advanced collision package which brings you active lane drift prevention, forward adaptive cruise control. That same technology gives you low speed collision avoidance, not on the highways, but around town. It will break and keep you from running into something. And a few other technologies that will basically keep you out of trouble. Okay, let's price our Lexus LS 600 HL. It's a big piece of change to start with, about 121 base. Now to go CNET style, you gotta add that executive class back seat. That's just plain fun, but it's gonna add $7,500. The collision avoidance package, which we didn't have, is definitely interesting at $6,500. Now you're up around 135 grand. With those numbers, this car makes no sense at any point. In fact, by my calculations, it takes 115 years or 1.8 million daily driver miles to earn back the penalty on this hybrid versus a conventional engined LS L with all wheel drive. So you don't do this logically. You do it because you're in love with an LS that happens to be a hybrid and because you're paying for it with either the company's money or the taxpayers.